When I posted my most recent video, I wasn't sure if the file would render. It was an experiment in saving and sharing large files, and it worked. So I'd like to thank my viewer community for helping me out with this. I experienced major issues with my laptop a few months back, and several of you visited my Buy Me a Coffee link and sent me several coffees, which allowed me to pay the tech guy who figured out the problem, which is something I couldn't fit in the budget at the time because I'd been out of work for over a year. It's been a goal of mine to produce self-sustaining videos, and if you'd like to help me reach that goal, please visit my Buy Me a Coffee link in the description. Another way to support my work is to check out my books and to leave me a review on either Amazon or Goodreads. There was a popular internet meme a while back that loosely compared the sine waves of harmonic frequencies with the physical structure of a conch shell. I say loosely because if you really study the two images, you can see that there's not a direct correlation. But still, there's an intriguing similarity here that I wanted to explore, and because I couldn't find a sharp enough image of the harmonic waves on top, I made my own. This one shows how each wave overlays. They start and end on the assumed mes or center line, and once they're all overlaid, you can see that the black waves all meet at the mes point on the mes line marked with a black dot. However, to make harmonic waves resemble a conch shell, those waves were all sized differently, top to bottom, reflecting various levels of wave amplitude. Using instead the same amplitude for each wave, the result looks nothing like a conch shell. I do think, though, that the overlaying of these harmonic waves is revealing something important involving the Mies intersection, despite the brown waves that fail to intersect it, or perhaps because of that failure. Keep in mind that a complete sine wave is composed of two parts, half taking place on one side of the center line and half on the other. These two halves constitute one complete wave cycle. So the first wave laid down is only half a wave, extending down from the Mies line and returning to it, but not completing the wave's second half above the center line. As such, waves on this graphic are colored brown if they're fractions, like the first half wave, and black if they're whole numbers. As you can see, the four brown waves don't meet the others at the Mies point of the center line. Only the black whole number frequency waves intersect the Mies. And this could have tangible implications regarding the effect of frequency on matter. Before I saw this correlation between the whole number frequency sine waves and the Mies point, I believed that fractional frequencies were valid expressions of their larger octaves. Every note, every tone in existence has fractional octaves. Taking 432 hertz as an example, we know that this A note enters the harmonic series at harmonic 27. One octave below that is 13.5 hertz, which should be just as beautifully intonated as every other octave of A27. And yet, there is no harmonic 13.5. There couldn't be because the harmonics that populate the series from harmonic 1 to harmonic 15 and excluding the even-numbered octave repeats, are performing a structural function in preparation for the scale to come. Harmonic 13.5 wouldn't fit into the structural expression of harmonics 1 through 15. In the next octave, I mention something important with regard to whole number frequencies. Formulated in 1900, Planck's law, E equals HV, 
describes the relationship between energy and frequency as proportional, where E is energy, V is frequency, and H is the Planck constant of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. This tells us that the energy of a photon is proportional to its frequency by a constant factor and only exists in multiples of whole numbers. Callum Coates restates this fact in Living Energies, his exposition of Schauberger's theories. Energy only exists in multiples of whole numbers. The total action of energy is always a whole numbered multiple of h. This means there's a palpable difference in fractional factors. Therefore, the magic of 432 starts with the number 27, not 13.5. I created this graphic to show the overlap of the first six harmonics generated in the series. If you've read the next octave, you'll know that only odd-numbered harmonics represent new notes. Even-numbered harmonics are simply octave repeats of the previously generated odd-numbered harmonics. And I did stagger the levels of amplitude in order to separate these waves to see them more clearly. The one common point through which all these frequencies travel is the mes, and its importance can't be overstressed. Euclid calls mes the sound by which all other sounds are regulated, wrote Charles Burney in The General History of Music, published in 1776. And Aristotle, in his 36th problem, section 19, says that all the tones of a scale are accommodated or tuned to the mes. The odd-numbered harmonics appearing here are all new harmonics, but they vary as reflecting either the power of 2 or 3. C at 1, E at 5, B flat at 7, and F sharp at 11 are all power of 2 values with only G at 3 and D at 9 being power of 3 values. And yet, both powers exhibit this snapping to the grid that's regulated, even defined, by the mes. If we then plot the frequency waves of the first four harmonic octaves of C, we see several points of intersection. All four waves intersect the mes point, three waves at the quarter points, and two waves at the eighth points. The energy being expressed here is regimented, but the odd-numbered harmonics intersecting at only the mes seem to be revealing something else, a complexity on the verge of cacophony, even noise, but regulated and harmonized by the centrality of the mes. Octave intervals are musically uninteresting, with several points of intersection between waves. Music, though, requires more than octave intervals. It requires the varied, messy overlay of notes shown here. When these various notes ring at precise intervals, the effect can be both healing and cacophonous. A balance must be struck, and that seems to be the purpose of the mes that draws the frequency waves together if only for a moment, belting them at the waist before sending them out again into the vagaries of harmony. Now imagine a set of equally tempered frequencies that lack the regulatory feature of the mes. Here I replaced the central dot with a thinner line to show that none of the waveforms of equal temperament actually intersect it. To show a clearer comparison, I reduced the line thickness on these graphs from 9 down to 2 points. This allows you to see that equal temperament frequencies not only avoid the mes, miss the meson, they also fail to harmonically overlay one another. I'm grateful for any feedback. Please leave your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching.